I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Got a really easy beginner's project for you and it's a basket liner. Now you can make it with just a plain edge like this or you can make it with a little opening here with a bow. You don't need a lot of fabric but it does depend on the size of your basket. A little small basket maybe a quarter of a yard, a really large basket, maybe a half a yard. So let's get started. When I bought this basket, it came with this yellow and white striped fabric. And I used it a long time to put my napkins in this basket. And then for fall, I decided to put a pumpkin liner on it. You can also make it to fit the decor of your home. So that's why I selected this teal, blue, yellowish, green, and white fabric to go with the colors in my home. These also make great gift ideas for the holiday season. You can use it to make a gift basket. Now to make the little tie, I'm just using matching bias tape, which you can get at Walmart, Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, and other fabric supply stores. To determine how large to cut your pieces, you want to measure the bottom of your basket. Now this is a square, so once you determine whichever is the largest width, because it can be different, so I would measure it going this way and then across the other way. Pick the largest size and then add a half inch. Then, on the side, you want to also measure the side measurement. Measure the longest side. One side might be a little different than the other. And then add about two inches. And I say about because it depends on how long you want it to come up over the top. So take your tape measure and go up over the top to see how far down you want it to go. Then add at least one inch to that measurement. So for my basket, I'm cutting my bottom piece nine and a half inches square. And it really helps if you have a square ruler, but you can still do it with a regular ruler. Use lines on your cutting mat. So if you don't have a small cutting mat at least, I would invest in one because the lines on that will help you to draw your square. And then for my sides, I've cut them nine and a half inches wide by 10 inches high. And remember, whatever your measurements are, you add one half inch for seam allowance, and then for your side pieces, you add another two inches for that. I recommend that after you cut out your piece for the bottom, that on the back side, write bottom on it, or at least B, so that you won't get it mixed up with your side pieces. Because there's only a half inch difference between my bottom and side pieces, and I wanna make sure I stitch everything together. So then set your bottom piece aside. Then you're gonna take your side pieces. Now I have a directional print, in other words, it's stripes. So you wanna make sure you don't get your stripes going in opposite directions, unless you want it that way. So I want my stripes to go up and down, so make sure when you're cutting your fabric, you cut your longest edge going in the direction of your print, whatever your print is. So now you're gonna bring them on top of each other and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam along here. But once you get to the bottom, so you start up here, stitch down, you wanna stop one quarter of an inch from this bottom edge. So don't stitch all the way down. Make sure you backstitch at your beginning and ending points. So you're gonna stitch all three pieces together stopping one quarter inch from the bottom. So I've now got all four pieces stitched together. Now I'm going to bring the two ends together and do the same thing. Line up your edges, stitch one quarter inch seam, and make sure you stop one quarter inch from the bottom. 
After you've got everything stitched, then you want to go to your ironing board and open up all of those seams and press them open all the way down. Here is my bottom square and I have it with the pretty side facing up, also called front side or right side. So make sure you're looking at the pretty side of your fabric. Take your side pieces and you're going to take the front side of that fabric, the pretty side, and bring it down on top. And you're going to start in the corner. Now remember how I told you to press your seams open? Well you have this edge of the raw fabric. This seam is pressed open. Here's the edge of the raw fabric. You want to take that edge and line it up with the edge of your bottom fabric. And you're going to see that little quarter inch split right there. Remember I, where I told you to stop. So pin this part of the seam down. So you've got this part of the bottom fabric is exposed, that little square. You're going to start right in here where the fabric splits. So I hope you can understand that. So you're starting way up here and I would pin your edge down. Then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch from this edge all the way down to the other corner. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to stop when you get to the little split here. So you're stopping right here. When you get to this corner Leave your needle down through your fabric, lift up your presser foot, and turn it. And so then, this side will now be lined up along the next edge. So now I'm going to drop my needle down in there, right there where that little split was in the fabric and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam and I'm going to go down to this other end. Now I would remove the pins but I would knock the camera over so I don't want to do that. My cameraman will get upset. And then let me line this up a little better and I'm going to keep stitching. Now you see this next split here Remember, I'm going to stop right there in that split. Let me get this smoothed out a little bit. And I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm going to leave my needle down and I'm going to grab a hold of my bottom fabric and line it up going straight across. Then I'm going to take my side pieces and pull it to line it up with the next side. And then you're going to continue around all four sides doing the same thing. Now you want to uh, go to your ironing board again and slip this over the end of your ironing board so that the back of your fabric is showing the not so pretty side. You're going to take that top edge and you're going to fold it over once a quarter of an inch and press all the way around the entire top. Then press it over again a quarter of an inch and press it all the way around. Then you want to stitch close to this edge right here all the way around. Now turn your fabric to where the pretty side is now facing out and take any one side, it doesn't matter which side you take, take the two side seams and bring them together and then go out here to where it's the folded edge right here and take either a pencil or a fabric marker, whichever one you want and just draw like a little horseshoe shape about like that. Then take a pair of scissors and go ahead and leave it folded and just cut right on that line. 
Now I'm using about 24 inches of quarter inch wide bias tape. And bias tape <clears throat> is folded several times. So when you open it up, you'll see the raw edges are folded in towards the center of the bias tape. What you're going to do is you're going to be folding this around the raw edge of your uh, little horseshoe shape up here. So find the center of your bias tape, get it to where it's going to wind up here at the top of your little horseshoe, and pin it right here. Then start at this end, right down here. And you can stitch across the end here to close it up if you like. And stitch these two edges together. So you're gonna stitch all the way up to here. And then I like to just gradually fold it around this curve. I'll stitch a little bit, open up the bias tape, keep folding it around this edge until I get all the way around this end, then finish stitching it up by stitching all the way down to the end. When you're done, it should look like this. And then when I'm all done, I like to just tie little knots at the end and then it's just ready to put in your basket. Remember when you're inserting your liner, make sure you're putting the back side of the fabric against the inside of the basket so that your pretty side shows. And then here on the bow, I just wanted a small bow, but if you want a longer bow, you want a longer tail on your bow, then of course, cut your bias tape longer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For other basket liners, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. And for other beginner sewing projects, those links will also be listed below. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram and don't forget to go to my Facebook page and check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is Scotty and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing.